So now we have our minimap image rendering correctly, right? But it's rendering to the full screen, which we obviously don't want. So what we want to do is render it to a texture uh, and then display that texture in our UI. So let's turn back on our canvas that we temporarily turned off earlier, expand it, and we are going to add an empty game object. So this is just going to be a kind of holder object for the minimap elements. So it's just an empty rect transform, right? So because it's an empty object that's a child of a canvas, it gets a rect transform instead of a regular transform. Uh, and what we're going to do with this, let's go into 2D mode since we're now editing UI. Push F to frame selected and we can see our whole UI canvas. I'm going to switch from free aspect to 16 by 9, right? So we can see the kind of shape a little more accurately. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this new minimap rect and hold down the alt key and click the lower right stretch anchor preset. This will be alt on Windows or option on OS X. And what this does, as you can see, is stretches the rect to be the full size of the canvas, right? The anchors are now in all four corners. And now what we're going to do is add as a child of our minimap game object a raw image. So we're going to right click, choose UI, raw image. Now, the reason that we're using a raw image and not a regular image is, or not just a UI image, right, is because the UI image can only display a sprite, right? It can only display a texture of the type sprite, and we want to display a the output of a render texture, which is not a sprite, right? So we need to use the raw image uh, type in this case. And so first of all, we're going to set the size. We're going to set it to 256 by 256 in width and height. And then we are going to anchor it in the lower right-hand corner. So I'm opening the anchor presets, holding down Alt, and clicking on the lower right uh, anchor preset. That is going to, it says up here, Alt also sets the position, right? So now our anchors are down here in the corner, and our we have a square white image anchored in that part of the canvas, right? So what we're going to do is now create the content that's going to be displayed in this image, and that is going to be our render texture. So let's highlight our, we'll put it in our materials folder. We're going to right click, choose create, render texture. And we'll call this minimap render texture. So what a render texture is, is it is a texture that is updated at runtime. So it is going to, whatever is being rendered into it will be displayed in real time, right? So it's basically like a regular texture, which is just a 2D image. Uh, but in this case, it's receiving its input from a camera, right? So every frame, our camera is rendering the scene and it is taking that output, that still image that's been rendered, that 2D image, and placing it in our render texture. Now, the default settings here are gonna be fine. The size is 256 by 256, which is the size of our raw image. And so we could turn off the depth buffer here because we don't need it but we really don't need to adjust these settings. And these are just basic um, sort of texture, texture settings, which you can learn more about in the documentation uh, for render texture. If you're curious, I don't think they're super relevant, so I'm not gonna go through them all here, but they're all here. It'll run you down. The size is somewhat obvious, the amount of anti-aliasing, the wrap mode, et cetera. Uh, which are fairly familiar texture settings. And they have actually an additional render texture example uh, here in the uh, docs page for render texture, which you might be curious about to make a, a kind of a live camera, uh, sort of like a TV on the wall style camera that's fed by a camera in the scene, right? So 
What we're going to do is we have our new render texture. We're going to select our raw image and we're going to assign that as the texture. It disappears, right? Because there's no content in the render texture yet. And now what we're going to do is drop back in our complete player tank prefab, select the camera, and here our camera has a field for target texture. So now we're going to drop in the minimap render texture and ta-da! We can see that now the output of our camera is being displayed in our raw image UI element. And so what we're going to do is we are going to enter play mode and we can see, oh, okay, so what happened here, right? I failed to delete the prefab that I was working on. So of course, we wanna make sure that we apply the changes and delete the complete player tank because it's gonna be spawned in by the game manager and hit play. And now we can see that we have a lovely minimap. So we can our uh, camera is updating into the render texture now. Oh, I have a bug here where it's not, uh, it's not getting killed. Actually, let me just fix that real quick. I think this should be correct in your, um, in the project that I sent to you. The layer is players. I changed this and then changed it back, but I think, yeah. So if you have an issue with this, you want to find the complete shell prefab and make sure that the tank mask is set to players, I, not minimap. Hopefully you guys will not have that issue, but if you do, make sure that the complete shell uh, tank mask is set to players so that it can damage the player. So now we have the capacity to render into a texture display it in our UI. And the last step is just gonna to be to make it look a little bit fancy uh, using a circular mask and a little border image. Uh, MC Jamry Dodger asks, is there an advantage to using a render texture instead of just using a smaller viewport rec for the camera? Well, you could actually, so what he's referring to is on the camera, you can actually change the viewport rect here, if you adjust the size of the viewport rect, you can change uh, what portion of the screen it's rendered on, right? Um, but, oops, wrong, there we go. Uh, but you won't be able to do the masking and bordering effect that I'm about to show you if you do it that way. So that uh, adjusting the viewport rect is more commonly done with, uh, if you're doing like local multiplayer, let's say you want to do four player split screen, uh, that's a pretty common way to do it, right? Just set each viewport to be a quarter of the screen and position them. Um, but for this, I think that using the render texture gives us a little more flexibility in terms of the display in the UI. Mr. Xgal asks, don't we need to prevent it from rotating first? You know, this was actually a topic of discussion among uh, the folks on my team at work about whether we should have it rotate or not. My original version did not uh, rotate, but some other folks on my team thought it was weird to have it not rotate, and they suggested that we have it rotate, and I figured, okay, fine. But um, And it actually makes it easier to have it rotate because you don't need a follow camera script. But if you do not want to have the minimap rotate relative to the player, uh, you basically just need a script that will set the camera's position to follow the player transform without rotating, right? It's really not too hard. It just won't uh, make it a child of the player. Yeah, you could have it toggleable. It's not complicated to do either way. You know what you could use if you want, if you look at the rollerball tutorial, there is a script for a camera that follows and doesn't rotate, you could just straight up use that. 